Da -da 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 -da. I've been asked, do you ever use pastels on black paper? And I say, uh, no, I don't, but I'm willing to give it a try. Hi, I'm Gail Sibley. And in this video, I'm going to demo with my pastels on black paper. Now, black paper, when you think about it, black paper is your going to be a, is dark, right? It's your dark value. It's a dark value. And everything you put on top of that is going to be lighter. Um, there will be, of course, dark pastels and they will be in the same dark value, but everything else will be lighter. Now compare that to using um, a kind of mushroom beige or a gray paper, basically a mid value paper, right? And you're going to have some pastels that are going to be lighter and you're going to have some pastels that are going to be darker. And of course, you're going to have mid value pastels, which will be kind of the same value as your paper. But black paper is your darkest value. So you've got dark, dark pastels and they will be, uh, you know, some might be a little bit darker, but basically you're in the dark value. Then you've got your mid pastels, your mid value pastels and your light value pastels. So both the mid and the light are going to be lighter than the dark paper. It's going to be a little bit of a challenge. So that will be interesting. And then to challenge myself further, I'm doing a still life with this funky looking headband, dangerous looking headband, and this great little pink piece of boa that I have no idea where it came from, but it's in my studio. And I thought, Hey, funky, let's paint that. And to challenge myself further, I'm going to be using Mount Vision pastel. So I haven't used Mount Vision in these videos before. So I'm using a set, their workshop set, which is two boxes like this. And then this just gives you an idea of the gorgeous colors I think, that are in there. Oh, they're gorgeous. And I'm going to be using Schmincke's paper, sans fix sanded paper. And I'm going to be using a sheet from this little sample pack. So both of those are going to be new to me as well as working on black paper. So let's go and see how that goes. So here we're getting started. This, uh, it's actually kind of a mauvey color. It looks a bit pink there, but it's quite a mauvey color. That was the mid value. And you could see, I was, I was actually shocked when I started putting it on, even though I was prepared for it to be light, I was shocked at how light it looked against the, the black paper. And that's what I was talking about at the beginning is that everything, everything pretty much is going to be lighter than the dark paper, except for the very dark um, pastels like that very warm purple that I put in as my first layer for the headband. The yellow is the lightest area and the mauve uh, it was the, um, the middle value. And then like I say, the, that red warm red was the dark. So there's, it's basically a light colored painting, fairly high key painting with the accent of the dark headband. So I've been putting in my second second layer here. Now I put this still life, I set it up against pretty much a white paper, white paper background, a white shelf, because I wanted to see, you know, the colors. I love painting with whites because you can really see these gorgeous, all the different colors. But the thing about setting it up with a, you know, very light um, background is that I would have to cover up quite a bit of the black. And I, I did do this on purpose. I did think about it. And I thought, you know, let's see what happens if I, if there's a lot of light parts rather than making it a dark painting, which would be also very, uh, a good exercise. And perhaps I'll do that, but I wanted to see how difficult it was going to be to, to deal with this black paper. And um, you can see that, you know, as always, I start I start the pastel with a very light touch and I build up layers, I build up layers. And I, as I went along, like in that little last bit right there, I really uh, put more pressure on. I realized I needed to put more pressure on to cover up all those little black, little black speckles. Those little white and dark lines, those are, you know, that little boa that I showed you had these silvery, silvery, like little pieces of tinsel. And some really reflected the light and some were kind of silhouetted. It was kind of, it's very interesting to see that. 
this painting, as you can see, is a really, there's a lot of negative space work. Um, I've talked about that in previous videos about using the space around an object to create it. So the spaces that are around that headband, the spaces in between and underneath that little boa, uh, I paint those in. So right there, I'm painting around those those um, spiky bits. You know, it's round on one end. Interesting, it's round on one end and then spiky on the other end. Um, the feathery, the other thing about the still life is, of course, there's this feathery, feathery, soft part and then these spiky hard plastic uh, it was a hard plastic um, headband and there's the sparkles on the you know the, the tinsel were quite sparkly and then of course there's the highlights on the edges of those on the headband I just added some green in there because what happened was I stopped the video I looked at it and I thought you know I need to show up that pink boa more and I knew that putting a little green in there would, um, you know, complementary color to the pink would highlight that pink color. I also felt that the side over on the right hand side needed some interest. Um, perhaps I should have moved the whole uh, still life over to the right, but because I hadn't, I wanted to put some interest um, on, on the right hand side. So I had those, those blues and pinks and a little bit of green in there. And I also wanted to curve it, sort of put almost a curve in uh, repeating the curve of the headband, but also bringing your eye back around and down to, to that headband. You know, working with big chunky pastels, especially with a camera when you can't really get right up to that pastel, is pretty tricky, you know, getting those little, all those little spaces, all those little spaces in the shadows that are cast by those spikes on the headband, it's tricky. But um, it is possible to do it, and it just takes um, takes a little bit of practice. And the, there are the 13 pastels that I used. I added the green right at the end. And there's the final painting. So that's an example of using pastels on black paper. I found that because uh, the, 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 the setup, first of all, was so light, only that the headband is really in the dark value, that I, I needed to use a lot of pastels to cover up the black paper so that I could truly have a light value and a mid value. And then when it came even to the dark part of the, pa uh, the painting, the headband, I wanted to use color, the purples and the sort of greeny brown. I didn't really want just the black of the paper. So that was kind of an interesting thing for me to find out is that for me, the black paper, it, um, isn't as interesting as it could be. I want to put more, I want to put more color in. So how do you think this, um, this worked? And do you use pastels on black paper? I would love to hear, so please leave a comment below. And come on over to howtopastel.com where I'm going to write a, a blog post uh, that will show the setup and my thumbnails and just give a little bit more about the, about the process. I, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I uh, please feel free to share it and subscribe to my channel because you'll then be the first to know when I upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching. I've been asked if I ever use uh, black, oh you, how to use pastels. No, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, Oh, I haven't done this for a while.